I'm Joe White. And I'm Kelly Fay. Welcome to Behind the Curtain, Ashland Community Theater. Today we are going to show you a scene that we did in our spring show entitled The Bartender and the Girls from Muncie, written by our very own Joe White. Thank you. The actors today will also be interviewed with Chris Dever, Mauro Ciccarelli, Katie Shander Reynolds, and Heidi Hansen will be here today as well to interview and talk about their experiences both on stage and also behind the camera. And this spring we have coming up on May 8th and 9th our spring show entitled Parents Day. 7.30 on the 8th, Friday, and Saturday we have a matinee at 2 and an evening show at 7.30 on the 9th. So if you're interested, go to the website, ashlandcommunitytheater.com, check out the ticket sales, and also if you're interested in joining us for some acting workshops and some uh, character development workshops that we'll be having in the spring, feel free to check it out and email us at ashlandcommunitytheater at gmail.com. Apple teenies. Oh, oh, Apple teeny <laughs> number one and number two for the, my goodness, lovely ladies <laughs> visiting our fine and lucky city, NYC. Enjoy. <laughs> Boy, get a load of him. He's a little creepy. Listen, let's just have this one drink and then just go back to the hotel. It's been a long day and we do have to get up early tomorrow. <laughs> He's cute, I'd say. Really? Yes, he does have a certain little mm, charm, right? Yeah. Oh, come on, Barb, really. This is our only night out. Tomorrow, after the conference, we go home. Cheers. Daiquiri's girls. Oh, time for a reload here. Ooh. <laughs> These are Thank very you. special daiquiris made from my own special ingredients, if you know what I mean. So anyway, let me know what you think. They're on me. <laughs> <laughs> Enticement. He's trying to entice us with free oh. drinks. And tell me that's not creeping you out, the way he's looking at us like he's undressing us with his eyes. For crying out loud, Barb. Come on. Really. You know, someone shows you a little attention <laughs> and you get all creeped out. Here, just... G-spots? G-spot martinis. <laughs> <laughs> With vodka, <laughs> strawberry, and pineapple juice, and the Grand Marnier. That is where the cheese spot comes in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness, the lounge seats are open. Come on, girls. Oh. You'll be so much more comfortable over here. You're so funny. Oh my goodness, let me help you out. Oh, I can keep you all satisfied down here. This hotel has the best lounge, the best beds, and sheets. <laughs> And as you've noticed, <laughs> the best bartender. <laughs> anyway, as they say around town, the party never ends over here. It just goes down, down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hilarious. That guy is hilarious. Mm. And I don't know who he thinks he is. And does he think we were born yesterday? We are from Muncie, Indiana, and we know that creeps like that exist in New York City, especially bartenders. Ice lady, Barb. Gosh, you're such an ice lady. Come on, when did you get so freaking cold. I mean, look at you. You're young, right? When was the last time you um, had a date? July 2009. <laughs> it was the Muncie 4th of July barbecue. Jim Gannon asked me, so of course I said no. yes. But then he tried yes. to kiss. Uh, oh, these are Kahluas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Were they Hershey's chocolate? Mm, right on top oh. for you all. Enjoy. And, Thank you. Oh, by the way, didn't mean to eavesdrop, but if I were that guy, mm -hmm. you know what I would have wanted. Yeah, the whole nine yards. Oh. Do you know where that phrase comes from? The whole nine yards. From no. the garment district. Come on, right here in NYC where you all are. Back in the day, those merchants, they'd bring in those bolts of cloth and people would check the goods. Ooh, and when they liked what they saw, damn, you know what they said? Give me. The whole nine yards. <laughs> okay. Mmm, mmm, yum. <laughs> that guy is lovable. Seriously? He is, yes, he's lovable. You know, this drink is pretty good. Mmm, mmm. Mm. Come on, Barb. Really, this is our chance. We are here in New York City, or 
NYC, as our bartender says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, we're here in the city where anything can happen. The city that never sleeps. Maureen, what are you talking about? We have to get up at 6 a.m. tomorrow, remember? Mm -hmm. For the dental conference, oh. that's why we're here. It starts at 7. Hey, they're going to have free coffee and danishes and free goodie bags for the first oh. 50 who show up. Naked ladies. <gasps> oh, yeah. No, they're drinks. They're, oh, my goodness. Someone is having a great time here. Oops. Time for some naked ladies okay. with apricot brandy, white Ooh. rum, sweet vermouth, yeah. lemon juice, and a splash of grenadine. And oh, by the way, sorry to eavesdrop again, but I've got a goodie bag too. Yeah, behind the counter. And it's from Columbia. Feel me? I don't mean that place uptown with all them smarty pants, all right? My good friend Mikey, that fine gentleman, you've no doubt noticed, he hooked me up with it. And I would love to share with you gals. So why don't you think on that smarty pants? Well, I'd take care of a customer. Open to the idea? Come on, what do you say, Barb? Positively not. Come on. Maureen, I think he's suggesting that we do drugs. Yes, drugs, Maureen. We can't get involved in that. What would your mother think? Oh, do you know what? Honestly, I think my mother would be happy that I am staying out later than she is on a weeknight. I mean, I'm afraid. I think she's afraid I'm just going to end up like her, alone or something. Restraint, Maureen. We need to use some restraint here and some common sense. Oh. I don't think you're thinking clearly here. This guy's giving us free drinks. He's offering us drugs. What do you think he's after, huh? What do you think he wants? Sex on the beach. Oh, oh, oh. my new concoction, <laughs> girlies. With vodka, strawberry schnapps, OJ, and cream. Oh, just enough cream to make it really good. If you follow me. So here, here you go. Let me know what you think. It's on me. There he goes again, trying to make us drunk with his free drinks and his free drugs. Oh my God, Maureen, you're thinking about it, aren't you? Okay. Usually, I would be bolting. But? Okay, but we are away from Muncie, Indiana, uh -huh. right? We're away from Dr. Yon and Dr. <gasps> Boring, ugh, right? God, who needs Novocaine with their numbing personalities? Really? <laughs> Very well, girls. Ooh. Is there anything else? Actually, I have some extremely good news to share here. My shift ends in just a few ticks oh, here. thank goodness. Yeah. No, and oh. I was hoping to use some of my insider NYC knowledge. Show you out of town girls around. Maybe a little meat packing district. Ooh. Check out some of them after hours clubs. I know you want to see them. Yeah, yeah, come on. Well, we have to get up early tomorrow morning, and yeah. I don't think we should Xenon. be. Xenon! Right, that club, that club Xenon, you know, with those exotic dancers. Yes. Ooh, and the male and the female. Oh, one. yes, and yes. The drinks, too. yes. Oh, <gasps> my lovelies, you are so lucky because I just so happen to know the owner of that place. Oh, oh yes! yes! And I can get us into that back room with the boom boom. Ooh. Yes, the Xenon, room of pleasure. And if everything goes well, and I know that it will, <laughs> you girls will be having the time of your lives. So when that 6 a.m. wake up call rolls around, you are gonna skip that silly conference altogether, okay? So what do you say? Are we ready to launch mission control here? Zero chance, buddy. Come on, Maureen, let's go. Zero hour, Barb, as they say what? in the military, right? You are Ooh. on. <laughs> hey, what's your name anyway? Wait, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Oh. A naked lady. Oh. Maybe a kiss? Uh. What, what, what about sex on the beach? Hi, welcome back. We now have the cast and director of the bartender and the girls from Muncie. We have Heidi Hansen, Katie Shander Reynolds, director Kelly Fay, bartender Chris Dever, and Mauro Ciccarelli. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank a you. great job that you guys done on stage. Very good.
Now, you guys were here last time when we did the drop-off, so I'm mm -hmm. going to ask the question to uh, Chris and Moro. What is the major difference between doing the scene on stage in front of a live audience, no mistakes, versus coming in front of a camera doing it with no audience and the ability to make a few mistakes and edit a few times? What do you guys think of the major differences? That was for you. Oh, I think there was a <laughs> lot of editing done earlier. <laughs> the, um, I think you feel the audience. Mm -hmm. you know, at least when you're in there, you, can, you hear a lot of the laughter and a lot of the applause, and you get to, hopefully there's laughter, but you get to uh, feel that a little more. And you, know, you, you can't make a mistake, or you hope you don't make a mistake, but for me, the biggest thing was to feel the audience and, and the reactions throughout the scene. Chris? Yeah, I think the use of actual alcohol back here in the studio, <laughs> although against property rules, gave us a lot of courage, and that, that made it easier. <laughs> but it was hard, I think, in both cases to act these lines. Mm -hmm. But when you have people who respond to the lines <laughs> so well, it is so encouraging, and it helps you step into them. Excellent, excellent. So speaking of people <coughs> reacting to the lines, uh, the character development. How did you guys get into your characters? How about ladies? Well, you know, I actually, I took a step back and I thought about why my character was so eager to hook up with this bartender and um, in New York City, away from Muncie, Indiana. And I created this story behind my story about my mother. And it was very, it was just, it, uh, and, um, and, and that helped me understand why I was behaving the way that, I, you know, th why the character was behaving the way that um, um, it's written in the script. So I would say, Joe, that that's what I did, and then that helped to understand and play with some of the, char the choices, you know, that, um, that I made or discovered along the way. Katie, what about you? Um, well, I think that I had taken the acting workshop with Kelly and she taught me about those essential questions that you ask yourself about a character and that definitely helped me too thinking about why would this person you know be in this bar and behave this way and be I'm, I'm sort of naturally a really friendly person so I would not treat someone like that so that was hard for me so I really had to come up with that backstory of okay who am I why am I here what what do I want from this situation and then I had to not look at them <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> because not we laughing get, get was very hard. Women, right? Just we like do. the yeah. opposite yeah. of acting. You're, yes. not, you're not on your own. You have to react. And <laughs> it, yes, and it was very hard not, not to laugh. And, and I think the first time that I, w I got through the scene without cracking up was actually the first time we did the scene on stage. <laughs> and I was very proud of myself because so I was sure I was going to blow it. <laughs> so Kelly, Katie brought up a good point about your acting classes and the character development. We're offering some acting classes in the, in the spring, mm -hmm. workshops, and also part of it, people are asking us to help them with character development. You know, what would you recommend, what, did your, what was your directorial advice to some of these actors that you worked with that helped them, you think? Um, it was really just trying to tune in to each of their characters and create a backstory that the, no the audience doesn't necessarily know, but they draw from it as they speak their lines with their fellow scene partners. So, um, for example, Heidi, like maybe you had a really controlling mother and you were breaking out and, you know, this is like, finally you're out of Muncie and for you, you know, who knows what. I want, <laughs> I want, that, I want that free Danish. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, she was starved as a child and <laughs> she's all about the free food. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and it was interesting, you know, working with different personalities and, and just trying to push people beyond their comfort zone a little bit and, and to, you know, when we look at a script, we might have a certain preconceived idea how it should be delivered. Or I know when I act and I look at a script, it's really hard for me to step back and see it any other way than the first way I read it. Mm -hmm. And then the director comes in and throws new ideas and um, it's really just about expanding that and, and seeing what we can create together. One of the things I like about this scene is, is the development of the characters and to see how they changed over the many times that, that we've seen this from early last spring. And you guys have done a great job bringing this, this 
the scene to life. I really enjoy watching it. One of the reasons we wanted to come down is to film this one again. And we're going to be entering it into a couple of contests to hopefully get some grant money. But I think the performances that you guys have done is just going to really help us uh, hopefully seal the deal and get that. So, uh, Kelly, great job of getting the actors up to up to the level that they're doing and then you guys are pulling it off. That was, that's been a great, it's been a pleasure for me to watch it. And Chris, this is your first time on stage too, wasn't it? During the spring show. That's right. Yeah. What was that like? With nerves, I imagine, and everything. Yeah, with all the projectiles that were coming up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it made for an interesting night, yes. that was for sure. Yeah. It's a self-defense <laughs> Absolutely, <and> yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, to, to kind of like do a scene like that that's so over the top in some ways can be very terrifying. Mm -hmm. But it is fun to try to like give it some suspense like you guys were talking about, like what's going on with the character. I think for my guy, he definitely was out of his league in terms of, he's also a fish out of water in NYC and is not big enough to admit it. And so as the women are kind of debating what is this guy really like, mm. he's doing the same thing. So they're kind of playing out the debate of, is this guy for real, is he a creep or is he really sweet? And I think one of the reasons the scene is fun is that the bad side, kind of the darker side, does win, and the devil gets his day in this one, which is which is kind of cool. And I give you a lot of credit as a first-time actor. You have to really ham it up in this scene, you know, for mm. to go along with the writer's vision. So, you know, to go from never acting on stage to kind of just being over the top. And I know I pushed you a little bit, you know, at times to be over the top, but it worked. It, it works when people respond to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you rehearse those lines like that at home, <laughs> you shut yourself down really fast. So the, the encouragement was huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I don't think I could ever have done that. Okay. Yeah. And then a certain energy, of course, like you guys were saying, comes from the audience and you feed off of that and it helps. And plus, I'm in the wings being in like, you know, so that. And, and this guy really knows how to close it down. <laughs> Joe just found a sleaziest guy he could and put me in there. There was methane acting. You know? who, who wants acting work? He just went down to the yeah, local just, bus station yeah, and said. I was at the bus station. You guys said, hey, you want to come to act? And I said, sure. I think the creepiest part was the finger thing, <laughs> waving to the girls yeah. that way. Yeah, that creeped me out. And I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> combination of Dr. Evil and, and. Yeah. Didn't think it would just. It was natural. The funny part of this sleazy part came out. <laughs> the funny part of this scene is when we did this scene, you, that wasn't even written in. You were actually standing in at one point in time as one of the fillers for the time being, and you just actually did the scene, and we actually just added that in. You remember how Morrow got right, added right. into this? That's right. So one of the things I love about what we do is we write a scene, we start performing it, and it changes dramatically from the moment it's been written on paper to the time it's actually on stage. So adding you just added that element, and, the, and it ended so perfectly having you come on and you be yourself, even, <laughs> even more so. Mm -hmm. That was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things I really appreciate about Ashland Community Theater is the majority of what we do is written by local people. So it's really exciting to work with the writer and develop kind of as a team the, the vision for the storyline and see it come together and new mm -hmm. ideas come once we get going. So. Absolutely. So we can find out who actually wrote that? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we won't tell you. It was me. No. But that, no, actually, the way that was written was uh, I was at Kelly's class, and she has an exercise in one of her classes that we actually do as an actor, and we have to say the next line uh, of the alphabet. So the first word is apple teeny. Boy, you remember your line now? Cute. Cute. See? <laughs> so alphabet, alphabetically, that's how we wrote, I wrote the scene. And, and it developed that way. And so I basically just took an alphabet and wrote the scene from that aspect. But the actors took all of those words and made it into what it is today. So it's great to see that thing you know, come from this piece of paper to, to what we're going to see on, stage, on, on screen in a little bit. And I imagine as a writer, there's a certain amount of letting go because you write this and you have a certain vision and then you see what people bring I don't to let it. Go easily, but yeah, it's I think it's called tough. disowning at some point, right? <laughs> you just well, have to let it go. To your point, the letting go part was tough because when I wrote that, I wanted to be the bartender. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I did. I read it. And I said, I really want to play the bartender. I really want to be this because I really wanted to talk to these ladies. Guess another time they never talked to me. But then I saw Chris do the read, and I said, I can't do the bartender. He's got to play that part. 
So that letting go, I realize I could have been tried to be selfish and say I want this, but I think you have to see what's the right thing to do for the scene, the play, et cetera. So watching you guys do it, I know it was the right decisions to make. It's better to let someone else take those kind of risks with women first, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was heroic. Well, my, my, my other question to you was, is, do you, have you tried this out in public, you know, the bartender routine elsewhere, and, and has it worked for you? And or is, or is that how you got into your character? <laughs> I found that when I tried it in the field, so to speak, <laughs> then it succeeded every time. So to come back here and actually have it fail. <laughs> <laughs> well, was, did it fail? It was very hard. I mean, you, I, I saw you leaving with her. <laughs> I saw one lonely woman left over. Yeah, yeah he's used to like hordes of women. Yeah, so. that's true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I made it very real. Uh, so Katie, you, you played this scene on uh -huh. stage here. True. And. Uh, and you said the character that you're playing is different than your normal personality, right? I'd like to think so. You'd yeah. like to think so. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but, but yes. So, how, so outside of delving in, so how do you delve into the mother? What did you delve into to try to become the character you portrayed tonight? Um, I was imagining, you know, someone who was probably about my age, not married, not much of a social life, sort of a dead end job, living in a. I've never been to Muncie, but I sort of pictured it as a pokey little town. Um, and then I was, I, the, the work for me was trying to put the mannerisms together that would, that would fit that person. And honestly, I thought about my grandmother a little bit, who wasn't really, isn't like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. in terms of her personality, but she's very sort of gathered together and, mm -hmm. and okay. I'm very expansive. I gesture a lot and I, you know, and so I had to kind of hold that part of me in and be stiller and sit up straight. And so I tried to be very prim and proper, I guess. Did it help, like, pulling your hair back, glasses, and your clothes? Oh, absolutely. Like, yes. This is my costume. Yes. Um, <laughs> I thought the kind of character that I was portraying would not have the wild, out-of-control hair that I am <laughs> blessed with. Um, <laughs> so I put that back. And then I thought, you know, sort of the stereotypical nerdy librarian -y look. Sorry to my sister if she ever sees this. Um, <laughs> I should wear my glasses, not my contacts. Also, when we did this scene on stage, I was in two or three other scenes mm -hmm. and I wanted to look different for each one. So I had to have a different look for mm -hmm. each scene and this was the one that I thought worked best in my not so fashionable clothes because I'm not really with it, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you're from Muncie, Indiana. I'm from Muncie, Indiana. No offense against Muncie. No offense. We no, love I'm Muncie. sure Muncie's lovely. No. Muncie, if, if, you, if anybody from Muncie <laughs> wants to be free for the ticket next year, <laughs> sure. yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> so, Maura, you played a bunch of different scenes uh, in, the, in the couple of shows that we've done. Um, you know, how does it feel to be, how do, you, how do you react to being different, as Katie was talking about? She was trying to be different by, by dressing differently, acting differently. What do you bring to the to your scenes that try to be different in each one of your roles? Like different hairstyles or something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 they all have a different hairstyle. She just say, if you notice the last show I did, I did have You're right. That, that is true. true. I yeah. thought it was quite flattering, yeah. the 70s look, because I used to have that. <laughs> another mom, another scene where you. I couldn't look at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a theme. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, it's a community theater, uh, and mm -hmm. I, I like part of the way everything works and how everybody just kind of, you know, just whatever it needs to get done, somebody just finds a way and picks it up, and that's how you kind of handle me some of these roles. And e each one has been a little different, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I just kind of, you know, take some of the stuff that Kelly's given us in class, and I, I kind of work on what that person might bring, you know, uh, in that scene. Um, and then I, you know, just try to emulate that. Really. Um, it was fun. I loved doing the scene with you um, for Thanksgiving. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, and I kind of thought back of, you know, like you talk about with your parents and stuff and how, how life was. And, you know, you yeah. think of some of the old sitcoms, you know, with the father reading the paper and, and the mother and the, you know, and you kind of emulate some of that right. as well. Um, the dress kind of helps, you know, and, you know, and some of the other ones were something a little crazy or a little more conservative. So That's the show tonight. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming and uh, you're out of your way, coming down in these very snow <laughs> days. Um, my, my one last question is if you were to ask, if somebody wanted to come yeah. part of Ashton Community Theater in a couple of words or less, what do you think, you, how would you suggest them to come reach out to us and what do you think their, their experience would be like based upon what you've experienced being in Ashton Community Theater? 
Hmm. Somebody wants to join, they're watching us now, they see us doing the scene, they see us having a lot of fun up here. They're like, I'm nervous, I don't want to go, it, it, it's, it's too experienced up there. How do you think we can get more people to join? What would you recommend? So the word that pops into my mind is, oh, like I'm going to get sentimental. It's like family, right? You know, you can be yourself and everyone just ex takes you, for, you know, it, and everyone, it's okay if you mess up and, and um, it's just, it's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just like a comfortable um, place where you can try something new. Mm -hmm. Look at the community. It's a community. <laughs> so we are looking for people. We want, we want actors, we want people to help on the stage, uh, writers. So anybody who's interested in being part of Ashland Community Theater, please reach out to Kelly and myself and we'll talk to you. Uh, and uh, maybe you can become part of the family. Yeah, and we'll be having some acting classes and workshops and I believe also a writing workshop mm -hmm. coming up in the spring. So be sure to check that out through our website and if you have any questions, just let us know. We'd love to have you join us. Okay. Thank you, actors, very much. <laughs> have a very good evening. We'll see you next month on Behind the Curtain, National Community Theater. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this spring, be sure to check out our show, Parents' Day, on May 8th and 9th, 7.30 on Friday the 8th, and 2 o'clock matinee and 7.30 show on the 9th, Saturday. And if you're interested in getting tickets, go to our website, ashlandcommunitytheater.com. While you're there, check out our workshops that we're going to be having in the spring, acting workshops and character development workshops. So if you're interested in any of those, email us at ashlandcommunitytheater at gmail.com. <laughs> you started it. I was fine. I take full responsibility. That's okay. Go for that. Yum. He's lovable. He is so lovable. How's the drink? Mm, this drink is really good. <laughs> All right, back sorry, we go. Sorry, okay. Put, put the, said, put the drink down that. and then pick it up is what he wants. Put the drink down. Drop the drink. Down. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe White. And I'm Kelly Fay. Welcome to Behind the Curtain Ashland Community <laughs> Theater. We're a non-profit, no, we're not a non-profit. Oh my God, sorry. What are we? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you want me to say? I want you to say, welcome to our show. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's like we're you're not talking a to a child. <laughs> Just what? That wasn't even anywhere in there. Like, I don't know what are you doing came. tomorrow? <laughs> Sex on the beach. I right, can't I'm watching. Listen, this is what you do. This is what you do. Sit there and look pretty. I'll just do the rest. Okay. No. All right. Say, what are you, you're we already answered this question on the last <laughs> show, so it's your turn. I think it's pretty obvious, Joe. Sure. I think there's no people here. And how did that feel? How does that differ? Oh, my goodness. Is the lack of groupies getting to you? <laughs> yeah. I usually hand out autographs and... The light went off. Is it still on? <laughs> <laughs> They're not interested. Yeah, we have been cut off. <laughs> 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 <laughs>